Hi everyone and welcome to this video where I am going to teach you some of the most fundamental principles and skills in Python programming. Now today we're going to go cover some um, essentials, so we're going to look at how to print messages on the screen, how to use information entered by the user, how to make a program do different things depending on what a user does or enters, and also we're going to look at how to use loops to make a program perform actions repeatedly. Um, and we're going to get going with this quite quickly. So you need to get yourself a Python editor. Now Python is a programming language, a uh, text-based programming language, and um, if you've got a Mac or a Linux computer like a Raspberry Pi, you've probably got Python installed already. If you're on Windows, you can get it from python.org. Um, or you could use something like Genie, which is a little bit um, a bit more sophisticated way of editing code. But actually, my preferred method, and the, the way I suggest you guys crack on with this, is to use a website called repl.it, or repl.it. That's R-E-P-L dot I-T. And that's a web app which allows you to do programming in loads of different languages, including, importantly, Python. So let's load up repl.it and get started. So when you get to Replit, you're going to need to sign up or log in. Um, if you have a Google account, then you can use that. And once you're in, you'll get a screen where yours will probably say that you haven't got any REPLs started yet. Um, we've got some navigation across the top. The most useful one for you probably is My REPLs, because this is where you're going to find the work you do. Now, to start a new session, you need to click on this um, red plus button. And make sure you choose Python as the language that you're going to be using. And pretty soon, you'll see that the Python editor appears for you. And if you want to make some changes, you can. I've set mine up in dark mode, uh, which you can do from the settings here on the side. I've also set the font size to be quite large so, so that it shows up clearly in the video. Now, there's two main areas for this. Um, on the left, this is where we type your code, your programs. And on the right is where you're going to see your program running when you've clicked the Run button. So let's get started straight away with our very first program. Now, Python is a text-based programming language, and it can be a little bit unforgiving. And what I mean by that is you have to type everything exactly correctly. So as I'm typing, make sure you follow exactly what I'm doing, particularly with things like capital letters. So the first program we're going to run is just going to say a message to the user when they run our program. We're going to go with a very traditional start programming, which is just to say, hello world. So to do that, you need to type print and then open brackets. Now that on my keyboard is shift and nine. And then we need to open up quotes and uh, quotes are you know, speech marks. So we can use single quotes like you'd get an apostrophe or double quotes like speech marks. And inside our quotes, we can type our message. And there's our first Python program, print hello world. So if I run this, we should see the message hello world appear on the screen over here. And there you go, that worked first time. So let's just see what's happening here. Our program begins with the word print, and uh, Replit has put that in a different color from the rest. Now, print is a built-in function in Python. So it's like a statement or a command. So we can tell Python to print, and it knows what we mean. And print just means put whatever is given to its as. And the print function works like this. It's always followed by pairs of brackets. And the print function works like this. You always get the word print with lowercase p, followed by a pair of brackets, opening and closing brackets. And inside those brackets is a message or some data value that you want to show on the screen. And the purpose of print is just to show stuff on the screen. It does nothing else, but it shows back on the screen a message. Now, we've had to put a message inside quotes, and that's because we want to tell Python that hello world are not command words. They are text data that we want to show on the screen. So I could have put, for example, um, the word print in this message. I could say hello world, I'm using the print function. And if I run this, this will work fine. And the only way Python knows that the print here 
isn't another command to print stuff out like it is here. The only reason it knows that is because this word print is part of what we call a text string. And this message is a string of characters, a string of letters, um, which is given to the print function. And we have these quotes at either side to show Python when our message begins and when our message ends. And anything in the middle is just going to be shown on the screen. The Python is not going to think that any of those words are special command words. OK, we're going to take a moment now just to pause. And I want you to uh, go back into Replit and write your own Python program to print out a message of your choosing. Once you've done that, um, you can resume this video and we're going to go on to our next skill. OK, so let's move on to our next skill. And uh, we've already talked about outputs. That's printing. We, we can show stuff on the screen. We can do that. But nearly every single computer program that you're ever going to write will have some kind of input as well. Uh, because that's what programs do. They take inputs and they use them to do some processing and they output a result. So we're going to write a short program that's going to ask the user just to tell us their name. And then we're going to print that name out on the screen back to them. So I'm back in my replit and I'm ready to write my little program. So let's start off by just welcoming the user and then asking them their name. So I've used print just to say hi there. And now I'm going to ask the user to enter their name. Now to do this, I'm going to use another built in function. And this time I'm going to use the input function. And notice that after input, um, I still put brackets just like with print, so they're really similar. And I even put a message in, and that message is going to appear on the screen. And the user will be able to type in their name immediately after that message. And that's actually why I've included a space here, because otherwise the user would start typing immediately after my question mark. Now there's one thing I'm missing here, and that is that if I want to save the input that the user's given me, I actually have to do something just before my input statement. So I'm just going to go back to the beginning of line two and I'm going to add something here. OK, so I've now written the word name and I've made it equal to the result of running my input function. So name is going to store the value that I get back from calling the input function. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry. We're going to talk about it a bit more once we've seen the program running. Finally, I'd like to be able to say uh, the user's name back to them again. So let's do that. So I'm going to use print again because I'm doing another output. Open my brackets and I'm going to use my quotes again. And I'm going to say, hi, whatever your name is, it's great to meet you. So I'm going to have the hi bit because that's just text. And I'm then going to use the plus symbol to join on their name. And I'm going to use a plus symbol again to join on another bit of hard coded text. So let's run this program and see if it works before I explain to you what's going on. So my print statement has shown me hi there, and my input statement is saying, What's your name? Let's pretend my name is Bob. So I enter Bob, and if I press the return key, it will run the next line of my program. And it says, hi, Bob. It's great to meet you. So let's again look at what we've got. Line one is should be pretty familiar to us now. We've used the print statement and the brackets and a message in quotes to say hi there. On line two, we've made use of a brand new function, the input function. And it's kind of the opposite of the print function. If print outputs things to the screen, input it can output to the screen, but really its main purpose is to then allow the user to type stuff in on the keyboard. And whatever that user types in, we store it in something called a variable. Now, a variable is a name um, given that we give to a space in the computer's memory where we can store data. So we can choose whatever we like to call that. We can use any label we like for that uh, space in memory. And I happen to have used the word name because I'm storing the user's name. If I was storing the user's age, I would use age. If it was a player's score in a game, I might call it score. 
I can use almost anything I like as long as I'm not using the names of anything built into Python like print or input and some other command words that you're going to come across later. So with the user's value, whatever they've typed in saved in name, on line three I can now use it in my print statement. So I'm going to say print, so I'm outputting again, a brackets again, brackets around the whole thing that I'm going to be showing. And then I've got a, a line of text or a, a bit of text, which is high, and then the space. And then I close my um, quotes off. And then immediately following that space, I've joined on using the plus operator. I've joined on the value that's being stored in the memory location, which I'm calling name. So whatever they've typed in on line two will get pulled out of memory here. And then once I've, I've used that value, um, I can use another plus symbol which joins on another string of text. So it starts a whole new string with a quote here and a quote here and I'm writing it's great to meet you and I've put an exclamation mark right at the start of it so that that appears immediately after their name as you'll see here the exclamation mark immediately after Bob. Okay, so it's time for you to do some of your own inputs and outputs. So I want you to add some more code to the program we've just made. Um, and I want that extra code that you're going to write to ask the user their age and then state it back to them in another print statement. So just as we said, uh, what's your name? And we said, hi, name, great to meet you. Uh, you could then say, what's your age? And then the message back to them might say, oh, you are whatever years old. I know it's not the most interesting of all programs, but it does demonstrate that you understand what's going on, and that's kind of the most important thing right now. Hopefully you got on pretty well with that last task, but just in case you got a little bit stuck, here's a solution for you. So we already had the print and what's your name and it's great to meet you and all we had to do was add another input to ask what the person's name was, sorry, what their age was and then print out their age in another message. So uh, that's what I've done here. I've got age is equal to input what is your age and then I'm printing out hmm and then their age and then years old, hey, I'm 35. You probably aren't 35. So let's run this and see what happens. Hi Bob, it's great to meet you. What is your age? Let's say 14. Hmm, 14 years old, hey? I'm 35. So we've covered uh, the most basic part of all algorithms, which is basically inputs, outputs, and different um, statements in our program running one after the other. But sometimes we want programs where different things happen depending on the state of the program. So it might be that if uh, the user chooses option A at the main menu, then they're going to play a game. But if they choose option B, they might uh, quit the game. So different things happen depending on input. And the tool that we use in Python to let us do that is if and else. Now these are statements that we can use in our programs to tell Python, do this if this is true, else or otherwise do this. And we call this overall selection. So let's get straight back into Replit and let me show you a bit of an example. So I've gone back to my uh, input output program and um, I've gone back to where I'm just asking their name and then I'm going to ask them what their favourite colour is. And if they have the same favourite colour as me, which is blue, then I'm going to say one thing. But if they type something else, then I'm going to say something different. So to do this, we're going to need a new variable. And this time my variable, I'm going to call it colour because I'm taking in their colour. Uh, and I'm going to use input again because I'm asking a question and I need to put the question I want to ask in quotes so I'm just going to say what is your favourite colour. Now what I want to happen next is going to depend on whatever they've typed in and is now stored in that colour variable. So I'm going to need to use an if statement to test the value stored in colour to see if it matches blue which is my favourite colour. So to do that, I can use the if statement, and notice that Replit's made that blue, just like input and print, 
and I'm going to say if color. Now this always catches people out. If I want to find out if two values are the same in Python, I have to use equals equals. The reason for that is that a single equal sign is what we call the assignment operator and it's used to set a value to be equal to something else. So it's a bit like saying x equals 2. It's like I am setting the value of name to whatever comes out of running my input. So I use a single equals to do that. But if I want to say, hey, is color equal to this, then I use two equal signs. But the really easy way to remember this is just that, equals two. We need two equal signs. Is color equal to, and then I've got to put this in quotes because it's a bit of text. I want to know if they've typed in the same bit of text. Is color equal to blue? And then I use a colon which is uh, you hold the shift key and it's just above the semicolon. It's just on my keyboard just to the right of the L key. And now when I press enter, my next line, replit, is going to push it forward. And this is called indentation. And it has been pushed forward, which tells us that the next line of code belongs or depends upon the line of code above it. Now, if your Python editor hasn't done that automatically, just press the tab key, which is the key above your caps lock key or the key immediately to the left of your Q key. That's your tab key and you can indent your text in underneath the if statement. So this is where we determine now, well, what are we going to do if they do type in blue? Well, I'm going to output a message using print and I'm going to say print blue is my favorite color too. But if they haven't typed in blue, then I want to say uh, a different message to them. So I press enter and I'm going to press the backspace key and go back to the beginning of the line. So I'm no longer indented and I'm going to use the else keyword else and a colon. And I press enter and notice it will indent me again, which is just right. It needs to do that. So otherwise I'm going to say, actually, let's have some fun. Let's use the color they've entered and add to that. So. Let's have a look at this. If uh, we're going to ask them what their favorite color is and save it as color, and if color is equal to, remember two equal signs, equal to blue, we say blue is my favorite color too. Otherwise, print color, so whatever they've typed in, and after that, we're going to add on the text is a terrible color. I prefer blue. Let's run this and see what happens. So, what's your name? Bob. What's your favorite color? Blue. Blue is my favorite color too. Now let's try this again. What's your name? Bob. What's your favorite color? Red. Red is a terrible color. I prefer blue. So that's using if and else to make two different things, either line six or eight, run depending on the value that the user has typed in and we've got stored in the variable color. Now there is something else we could do. Suppose we have two favorite colors. Pretend we like blue and green. We can actually adjust our if statement to allow us to check is the color equal to blue? Otherwise, is it equal to green? Otherwise, do this. So let's uh, make that change. I'm going to just click at the end of line six, press enter, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to start a new statement on line seven. And that is L if. And elif means else if. So otherwise, if this is true. Now we have to do the whole test again. So elif color equal to green colon. Uh, and then I can put in print. I like green as well. So let's change my else statement now. Just say uh, any other color is a terrible color. I prefer blue and green. So now my program is going to take in the value uh, from the user, store it as color, and then I'm going to test is color equal to blue. If it's not, I'm going to test is it equal to green. And if it's not, I'm then just going to print this message out. So let's try that in action. What's your name? Bob. Uh, what's your favorite color? Well, we know blue works. Let's try green now. I like green as well. Let's run it one more time. Uh, let's try red again. 
red is a terrible color. So there we go. Our program can now check for two different values. And if it's anything else, it will just jump down to the else part. And I could put as many elifs as I like. I could have 10 elifs with all sorts of different colors that I like. And then just say else, if it's anything else, say this. Okay, so we're gonna ramp up the difficulty a little bit this time. And for your next task, I want you to write a Python program that asks the user for their favorite food. Now you can choose uh, whatever your favorite food is, but if their favorite food, whatever they enter, is the same as your favorite food, then I want you to print I like, and then whatever the name of that food is, too. Otherwise, I want you to print out yuck, and then whatever they've typed in, is disgusting, I like, and then the name of your favorite food. Uh, so for example, if you liked pizza, then your program would check if what they've typed in as their favorite food is equal, equal to pizza. And if it is, it would say, I like pizza too. Otherwise, if they typed in sausages, you'd say, yuck, sausages are disgusting. I like pizza. This task uses the exact same skills that you've just looked at for your um, favorite color. We're just changing color for food. And if you finish this task quickly, you could use elif so that you can have a few different responses depending what they type in. So hopefully you got on pretty well with that task. Again, we're just using the same um, types of skills that I've already shown you, uh, but here's a solution if you got a bit stuck. So we're gonna ask the user to enter their favorite food and I'm gonna store whatever they've typed in in a variable I've chosen to call it food this time. And then I say that if food is equal to pizza, then I print good taste, I like pizza too. Otherwise, I'm gonna print yuck, pizza, sorry, not pizza, whatever they've typed in, food is disgusting, I prefer pizza. So let's run this and see if it works. What's your favorite food? Pizza. Great taste, I like pizza too. Let's try this. Uh, what's your favorite food? Uh, chicken. Yuck, chicken is disgusting, I prefer pizza. So that's working pretty well. Now you may by this point have come across an interesting thing that happens if we don't do the exact same capital letters. So let me run this again, but I'm gonna type pizza with a capital P. See what happens now. Yuck, pizza is disgusting. I prefer pizza. That doesn't make much sense because I've checked is food equal to pizza and I've definitely typed in pizza. The problem is that the computer doesn't really know what we've typed in. It has no concept of what a pizza is. It just knows the exact letters we entered. And a capital P, is not the exact same letter as a lowercase p. So there's a few ways we could fix this. We could actually use a special word called or. We could say if food equals pizza or, and I have to do the whole same test again, food is equal to pizza with a capital P. And this says, well, if food is equal to a small case pizza or food is equal to capital pizza, then it should run that line. So let's try this. What's your favorite food? Pizza with the lowercase, let's prove it works. Good taste, I like pizza too. And now pizza with a capital P. Good taste, I like pizza too. And let's just check, double check, it still is working properly. Let's put chicken back in. Yuck, chicken is disgusting. So we can use the or keyword to check for multiple things in our if statements. So we're nearly at the end of this lesson and you guys have done amazingly to get this far and I hope that you are so pleased with what you've managed to do and I'm sure you've come across a few little problems along the way but you've probably learnt so much more about programming just because of the mistakes you've made and the, the way things haven't been typed quite rightly. You're going to be learning so much through those little mistakes. Anyway, the last bit of programming that we're going to look at today um, and this is another fundamental aspect of programming, and it's loops. And loops just mean that we can get our programs to run certain parts over and over and over again, either for a fixed number of times or while something is true. So it's a bit like having an if statement, but it loops. So it'll check if it's true, 
and it will run and then it will check again and keep checking again until that thing is no longer true. So we're going to use a while loop to print out a message that's going to kind of show off a little bit about our abilities to program. We're going to print out I can code in Python 10 times on the screen. So let's see if we can get that working. So we're back in Replit and I'm just going to go straight ahead and write this code and then I'm going to explain to you what's going on. So I'm going to start with a new variable and I'm going to use a counter variable. So I'm going to call it counter and I'm going to set this to zero. And this is just going to keep track of how many times I've printed my message on the screen. So counter when I start is zero because I haven't shown it on the screen at all. In fact, I could even call that number of times on screen. Now notice I've used um, underscores here, which is uh, you hold the shift key and it's just to the right of the zero key on the keyboard or it's actually like your minus sign, but it's shift on the minus sign. And the reason for that is that you can't have spaces in variable names because as soon as you put a space in, in fact, if I do it, if I do this, you should see that Python is going to think that number is a command word, of is a command word, times is a command word, on is a command word, and screen is a word. And it's going to get completely confused. So we can't do that. Instead, we have to use underscores so that Python still sees this as one word. But us as humans, we see the underscores and we know, oh, those are kind of different words. So I'm going to have my counter. It's going to be called number of times on screen is zero. Then we're going to use a while loop. And I'm going to say while number of times on screen and now I'm going to say is less than 10. Now less than is just like in maths, um, it's like this little crocodile shape so you've got um, the less than symbol and that I found by doing shift and then the comma key. So I'm going to say while it's less than 10 colon enter and notice it's indented again just like it does with if statements. Um, we're going to print something on the screen. I'm going to output I can code in Python. So this program sets a little counter to number of times on screen is zero. And while that counter number of times on screen is less than 10, I'm going to print I can code in Python. Let's run this program and see what happens. Now, depending on which version of Python you're using, you might have just seen um, I can code in Python appear loads of times on your screen, many more than 10, or you might, if you've been using Replit, have seen it not at all, and Replit might have just crashed. And the reason for both of those outcomes is that we've got our program stuck in what we call an infinite loop. We've made a program that will never stop running and will never stop printing I can code in Python on the screen. And the reason for that is, Although we set number of times on screen to be zero at the beginning, and we're saying while number of times on screen is less than 10, print I can code in Python, we've never actually increased the value of number of times on screen. So it's still zero. Because it's still zero, this while loop will always, always run because number of times on screen will always be less than 10. To fix this, we have to take number of times on screen and make it equal to itself, whatever value it already has, plus one. We're going to increase it by one. So that's what I've got here now. Number of times on screen is equal to whatever value is currently being stored in the memory location that we're labeling number of times on screen, whatever that value is, plus one. So it takes its current value adds one to it and saves all of that in place of the value that used to be stored there in memory. So now if we run our program again, we should see this just 10 times. There we go. And if I wanted to, I could even make this run 100 times. And so I can make something output on the screen 100 times, even though I've only had to write it once. And that makes my program so much more efficient. So over to you. What I'd like you to do now is to write your own Python program that outputs uh, a message of your choosing on the screen 100 times. And you have to use a loop. You can't just do print and then your message and copy and paste it 100 times. You've got to use a loop to do it. Um, if you found this quite straightforward, 
um, or you've done some Python before, then there's an extension task for you, and that is to use the internet to do some research into using a for loop in Python that will allow you to print out a message a hundred times without the need uh, for using a counter variable, such as number of times on screen. We've covered lots of different things today, uh, and it's time for you now to show that you have understood everything that we have looked at. So to do that, I want you to write a Python program that uses each of the techniques that we've covered. So that includes um, outputting messages using print, using input and variables to store user's input and save it, testing the value that the user has entered using if, and see if you can also include um, a loop so that things repeat. So as I say, you can come up with any idea for program. Um, a good idea might be maybe a joke game. So you could ask the user to, um, to enter something and then you could sort of tell a joke based on the input they've given. Uh, but it could be anything that, that you fancy, just as long as you're demonstrating each of those skills.